Hey everybody, I'm Roel Dionisio, and I wanted to give you guys a look at Wi-Fi Explorer Pro, which is a Wi-Fi scanner application that is used within Mac OS. If you haven't checked this out yet, you should. You can get a seven day free trial if you head over to the website, and I'll put a link in the description of where you can get that. But I wanna go into some of the features that we have here in Wi-Fi Explorer uh, Pro and see why it's useful for you. So first off, like I said, this is for Mac OS. This is used as a Wi-Fi scanner to look at what Wi-Fi networks are around in your area. And here I have the main window up. At the top, you have a play and a stop button. Now this will stop the scan if you're currently doing a scan and then play to start the scan again. In the next section here, you have a drop down to say what kind of uh, scan you wanna do. So you got an active, which uses, is using a probe request and probe response frames. It can be used when you're connected to the Wi-Fi network. And it utilizes uh, what's called null probe request on each channel supported by the device that's using Wi-Fi Explorer. Once the scan is complete, it displays the, the networks there in the main screen here where you see all these networks. The other type of scan is called the passive scan. It places your Wi-Fi adapter in monitor mode and it captures all 802.11 frames heard by the adapter. But you cannot use your Wi-Fi adapter in this mode since it's not connected to an AP. But you'll be able to catch some hidden networks in this mode. There is another mode called directed, which just scans for a specific network, acts very similar to an active scan. Now, if we look at manage remote sensors, that, that will actually go into, say, a Cisco AP and do a scan for you there. Here in the middle section, it's telling me what interface I'm actually scanning on and if I'm associated to a Wi-Fi network and what channel it's on, the channel width, and the data rate. Now over here to the right side, as you can see, we can enable some sidebars and you'll get some automatic filters here. So you can do a filter by the name of the SSID, the mode, uh, any of these uh, pre-configured filters you could use to narrow down, say, Apple access points. That's one example. Now, if we look at this toolbar here, this uh, button here, that actually gets rid of the signal area, the a lot of where most of the details are of a selected network. And then, if you click on the right button, it brings up the right sidebar, where you can actually see what kind of issues there are on a particular Wi-Fi network. So it it kind of gives you some root cause analysis, such as here when I selected this BSS ID, it's saying that there's a low signal strength and some overlapping networks on the 2.4 uh, band. And then you could actually look at utilization and look at your beacon overhead for these networks. Now I am selecting uh, an automatic filter, so I'll take that off. And then you could also look at any Zigbee networks, but you do need a special adapter to view Zigbee. So I'll get rid of that sidebar there. Now filters are pretty cool. So if we head down here, let's say you wanna narrow down what you're looking for. While you do have these pre-built filters available, you could also use this filter bar to narrow it down even more with your own filters, right? So if we wanna look at all five gigahertz, we could do that and that shows you five, but you could also do 2.4. Now there are some filters for that here on the left side so we can just view all 2.4 and 5 without having to type that in. So we'll look at all of them again. But let's say you're trying to look at um, like a specific SSID, right? We'll look at mine. There it is, it narrowed it down. So the, the, the filter bar is pretty easy to look at certain things and you can see that my 2.4 is heavily congested but I do have a wireless camera that's running right now because I'm recording in my garage, but I do have to watch to make sure my daughter's still sleeping and not roaming around in her room. Now, if we look more to the left here, we can 
again, look at the pre-built filter. We can narrow it down to all open networks and there are no open networks around me, which is good. And we can look at all the secure networks, whether that's secured by a pre-shared key or maybe enterprise. Now we look at the network list here, right in the middle. Here's where all the networks populate that can be heard by your Wi-Fi adapter. This uh, view can change. As you can see, I have a number of columns here. These are the columns I've selected. But if you right click on any of these columns, you can enable something such as country code. And you can view the country code of the BSS ID. Or if there's anything else that you're wanting to look at, such as fast transition, is that enabled for this Wi-Fi network on the list? So those are a lot, there's a lot of different columns that you could enable, and it's up to you depending on what you're trying to look for, what you're trying to find or troubleshoot. Uh, and here is a way to easily get that information for you. Moving on, down here we have the spectrum graph. And if you select a network from the list, such as the one I'm connected to, you're going to be able to see what networks, uh, these, the, what channels these networks are operating on. So like I said, select a network. And then down at the, the, the graph here, the spectrum graph, click on spectrum and you'll see what networks are on what channels. And that can help you determine what channels that you want to use, which channels are available to use, maybe which channels are highly congested with any other networks that are in the area. Now if we go back here to this list, you can hide 2.4 or 5 here if you wanted to so you can see a closer look at what you're dealing with. You can see here in the 2.4 someone's taken up a big chunk of the spectrum there. Uh, you can do it just to five and see that there's not many people in my area that's utilizing DFS channels, which is good for me. So I'm going to show all the networks again. I did, and I did that at the top left here, clicked on all. And one of the cool things that you could do in this spectrum graph is if you had a spectrum analyzer, which I don't have plugged in right now, the spectrum would actually start populating within this graph over the channels. So you could see which channels are more utilized than others. Now, when it comes to looking at details of Wi-Fi networks, what's really neat here is you can go to advanced details of the network. And this is what, what you would see if you were to do a packet capture or a frame capture. When you're doing a frame capture, you're gonna see a lot of details like this in the list. And what's really neat here is you can see what data rates are supported, any other information element that you're trying to find, you will find it here in the advanced details section. Under the network details, you'll, you'll see some of that same information, but it's more condensed and formatted in a way where it's just showing you some of the more important information, such as the SSID, BSSID, what vendor the hardware is, what your encryption is, what your SNR is, all those cool details will be here. So I like to stick in the spectrum and advanced details section quite a bit when I'm troubleshooting or just looking at some networks. What's really cool too about Wi-Fi Explorer is if you drag this, this uh, spectrum graph here, and drag it to your desktop, it'll save that as an image. And you could share that on Twitter, you could save that for a report you're trying to make, whatever you wanna do. Now I wanna show you some cool tricks that I came across from the author of this application, and it was shown right over on his website. Some of the cool things that you can find here is if you're looking at the spectrum list, right, or I mean the network list, click on a specific network and hit the space bar and you will get some details of this network, the date and time, signal strength, SNR, etc. And this, all this information here that it's been gathering, you could export this to CSV and do whatever you want with that data. Maybe you want to correlate it with uh, a site survey that you were doing. I don't know, maybe you are able to do that. Or maybe you were able to try to correlate some troubleshooting that you're doing on a floor, a floor plan and 
see what was going on. Maybe there was a really low signal strength. So you can tr try to do some troubleshooting with this tool alone. Now it won't get you all the way there, but it can help you in some of these scenarios. Another cool trick here is that if you want to get some information based on the columns that are being shown here, which is why I have uh, two screens here on the left side, I have text edit open. So what you wanna do is select and do command C, head over to your text pad and do command V. And based on the columns that you're, you're displaying on the screen, whatever columns you have enabled, by copying that, that whatever network you have selected and pasting it anywhere on a document, you're able to paste whatever data was in those, populated in those columns. And that's pretty cool because then you could save out just that specific data for that network. So that's a neat little trick. So let me try to do this again with the information element. You could right click on the information element and do copy element and paste that into whatever notepad you're using. Or maybe you wanted to copy all of the, all of the elements here. Let's do that again. Copy all elements. And now I have that all saved off into a, note, a text edit document. And you can save that for your own documentation purposes, or maybe you're trying to do some troubleshooting. Now some of the other things that you could do, one last thing that I wanna show you is something called annotations. Now annotations can be useful for when you're trying to identify a specific AP. So to do that, what you wanna do is enable the annotations column. So what I did is I right clicked on one of the columns here and hit annotations. And you see this annotations column here. You can just click right in there and type in whatever you wanna type in here. So you can do rogue AP for example. And anytime that, that BSS ID shows up, that annotation will be in there as long as you've saved it. And that way when you're reviewing the Wi-Fi Explorer scan that you've done, you're able to see, hey, there's that annotation I did for that access point, and there's a note that I created showing that I identified it as a rogue AP. So there you have it. That's kind of my quick rundown through Wi-Fi Explorer Pro and the reasons why I love using it every day for my wireless troubleshooting, planning, or maybe when I'm out traveling anywhere looking at any SSID or Wi-Fi space and I will analyze it using Wi-Fi Explorer Pro. So there it is. Head over and to the description and you'll see all the links about um, where to go to download Wi-Fi Explorer Pro and where you can get the seven day free trial as well. If you have any questions, leave uh, some comments down below and I'm ha I'll be happy to answer them. Thanks guys.